Hello everyone! Welcome back sa aking channel. Meron na naman tayong bagong pag-uusapan ngayon. Pero bago natin ito umpisahan, I'd like you to revisit the topics discussed on the prepayment episode and also the unearned revenue episode. Guys, our topic for today will be all about the methods and recording deferrals. And yun din yung dahilan kung bakit sinabihan ko kayo na i-revisit ninyo yung prepayments and your unearned revenues. Kasi yung dalawa na yun, yun din naman yung bumubuo sa deferral accounts mo. And when we are discussing of deferrals kasi, meron kayong mga dalawang methods in recording yung prepayments and then in recording for your unearned revenues. O, sa maniwala kayo or hindi, nung ginawa natin itong matrix na ito, kung saan yung prepaid expenses, merong sa taas ay asset, tapos sa kaliwa naman expense, samantalang sa unearned revenues, makikita mo sa taas liabilities, sa kaliwa naman ay revenues. O, ito din yung corresponding methods. <laughs> so that, pagdating sa prepaid expenses, meron kang asset method or expense method. Pagdating mo naman sa unearned revenues, either mag-record ka using the liability method or the revenue method. Now, when we discussed yung prepayments, meron akong ginamit na example. And let me pull that example para makita natin ngayon kung paano ito ginagawa na asset method and then your expense method. And going back to the illustration of Pepe and Company, if you remember it, Siguro naman natatandaan nyo pa ito no? unless hindi nyo pa pinapanood yung aking episode on the prepayments. So meron tayong examples na tatlo. The purchase of supplies on May 1, the payment of advance rental on August 31, and the payment of your insurance policy on November 1. Now, sa mga susunod na slides, ipapakita ko side by side ano yung entries when we are using asset method. At ano naman yung entry when we are using expense method? O, umpisahan natin kay supplies. On May 1, under the asset method, ang debit upon the purchase of supplies will be debit to supplies account and credit sa cash. And correspondingly, naglagay ako ng T-account dito sa baba for the amount of 30000 para kay supplies account. And yung supplies, this is a current account. This is, sorry, this is a current asset account or an asset account. Kapag expense method naman, makikita mo dito na imbis na supplies, ang entry natin ay supplies expense. Kaya, ang T-account naman na prinaject ko dito sa baba ay supplies expense. O makikita mo, ano, asset method, balance sheet, yung expense method, income statement. So, pwede nating sabihin na kapag asset method, oh, balance sheet approach. Kapag expense method, oh, income statement approach. Pag balance sheet approach, nagre-recognize tayo ng asset account, kaya dito may supplies ka. Pag income statement approach, nagre-recognize tayo ng expense kasi expense method ito in, when we are talking of this deferral account, uh, prepayments. Ngayon, ano ang magiging entry nila upon adjustment? So, pakita ko sa inyo ang entries dapat natin upon adjustment. Kung asset method ka, nag-debit ka ng supplies expense and credit to supplies. So, for the amount of 20,000, ito yung na-determine natin na amount before. Ano? Kung hindi, ka, hindi mo alam kung saan galing yung 20,000, balikan mo yung ating illustration doon sa previous episodes or revisit mo yung mga naunang slides when we projected the uh, illustration for the details okay debit expense credit at the supplies makikita mo ngayon naglagay ako ng additional t account for the supplies expense under the asset method o nga pala sa supplies account makita mo na nabawasan ito ng 20,000 tapos nadagdagan ka naman ng supplies expense account Bantayan mo yan maigi, ano? kasi mamaya i-compare natin. 
Eh, project ko lang, pakita ko lang, eh, paliwanag ko lang pala kasi naka-project na. Kung paano naman sa expense method. Initially, nag-set up tayo ng supplies expense for the whole amount, di ba? O dito naman, mag-set up tayo kung magkano yung hindi pa na utilized doon sa supplies expense. Kaya dito makikita mo, nag-debit tayo ng supplies for 10,000, nag-credit tayo ng supplies expense for 10,000. Tignan po ninyo, ano, yung T-accounts naman natin ngayon under the expense method. Sa supplies expense, 30,000 less 10,000. Tapos, dahil nag-set up tayo ng unused portion, nagkaroon tayo ng 10,000 na supplies yung asset account natin. O, oh, when we are talking of asset method kasi di ba, ito yung tinatransfer natin, yung used up portion galing sa asset account papunta sa expense account. Kaya, yung 20,000 kasi dito, ito na yung gamit. Ito yung gamit na. Ang matitira na lang sa asset, yung unused portion. Which is, yung ano, 10,000 na lang. Sa expense method, dahil in-expense out mo na itong lahat, pag nag-adjusting uh, entry tayo, kailangan natin i-set up ano yung hindi mo pa nagamit. Kasi in-expense mo lahat eh. So, i-adjust natin para ma-recognize ano yung hindi pa nagagamit. So, yung adjustment natin dito is to set up kung ano yung balance ng supplies dapat at the end of the year. O, ito lang natin, ano, sa asset method, ang supplies account mo, ang balance, 10,000. Ang supplies expense mo, 20,000. Pagdating sa expense method, ang supplies expense mo, 20,000. Ang supplies account mo, 10,000. Pag i-compare mo yung maigi na dalawa, yung ending balance mo, parehas pa rin. So, nagkaroon ka lang ng difference sa approach and yung adjusting entries or yung manner of recording kung ano yung accounts na ginamit muna and then yung mga amounts na ginagamit natin para i-adjust yung mga accounts pero dapat balance ka pa rin regardless kung ano yung method na ginamit mo and by the way, when we are talking of these two methods parehas yan acceptable depende na yan sa management or kung sino yung in charge sa accounting department accepted yan parehas naintindihan na po yung asset method versus yung ating expense method. Puntahan natin ngayon ang prepayments. Ah, sorry, yung prepaid rent. August 31 ito nangyari. Kung asset method ka, nag-debit ka ng prepaid rent for 150,000. Ang difference ngayon, again, for expense method, expense agad yung ginagamit mo. Kaya dito, rent expense mo, 150,000. And again, I did the T accounts para i-set up lang yung asset account sa asset method, yung expense account sa expense method. Upon adjustment, o makikita mo, ang binawas natin under asset method, yung na-utilize na. Pero pagdating sa expense method, ang adjusting entry natin dyan is kung magkano yung natira. Kaya magkaiba din sila ng amount. Pero in any case, kagaya ng sinabi ko, regardless of the method being used, Dapat, sa dulo niyan, yung mga ending balances ay magkakaparehas pa rin. Kaya sa prepaid rent mo, 50,000 yan, and your rent expense is 100,000 pesos. The same with your insurance account. Noong November 1, prepaid insurance mo, 12,000, asset method. Sa expense method, insurance expense agad. Upon adjustment, O, debit ka ng insurance expense sa asset method, credit sa prepaid insurance. Pagdating sa expense method, nag-debit ka ng prepaid insurance for the unused portion. Yun yung adjusting entry. O kaya, pag dini-account ulit natin yan at tinotal natin, magbabalance pa rin sila hanggang sa dulo. Yung ending balances nila. Prepaid insurance is 10,000. Yung insurance expense mo ay 2,000 pesos. So, nakikita na ninyo kung paano yung comparison ng dalawa. Regardless of the methods, dapat ulitin ko lang. Uulitin ko na naman. Magkakaparehas yan palagi. So, that's how we do asset versus expense method. Now, puntahan naman natin yung unearned revenue. 
Dito naman, gagamitin ko yung ginamit natin sa Unearned Revenue Illustration. So, this is the company of Netflix. So, dito makikita mo ano, yung the same details. Except na yung ginamit natin pala, yung default na method doon sa previous episodes, that is liability method. So, pre ko lang ulit yung entries natin dito. O, kung mapapansin mo, on January 1, debit sa cash, credit sa and earned subscription fees which is a liability account tapos yung mga adjusting entries natin debit sa liability account credit sa revenue kasi tinatransfer na natin yung portion na na-earn from the liability papunta sa revenue account o kaya dito debit natin sa adjustments yung liability account pakita ko lang yung mga entries January 1 That is the initial entry. January 31, adjusting entry. February 28, adjusting entry. O yung, January, uh, yung March XX, that is another collections, advanced collections. Kaya ang entry mo, ang credit mo, liability account, yung unearned subscription fees. O entry 5 and entry 6, these are your Um, adjusting entries kaya debit ulit tayo ng liability account and credit to revenue account na subscription fees kapag nag solve tayo ano, using your T account sa ending balance kung makikita mo yung unearned subscription fees mo which is your liability account when we do the math yung balance niya ay 200,000 ang subscription fees mo naman ay 162,000 pesos So, from the 362,000 na total advanced collections, ang na-earn mo na, yung kinita mo na ay 162, i-transfer na natin yan sa revenue account. Ibawas mo na yan sa liability account. Kaya, ang natira doon, 200,000. Now, that's how we do the liability method. Pag ginamit naman natin yung revenue method or your income statement approach, i-modify ko lang yung ating illustration. Oh, so, this is your modified illustration. Ano? Basahin ko lang. Kasi, minodify ko nga ito. Assuming that adjusting entries are made at the end of the year instead of your monthly adjustments and the management of Netflix requested for an interim financial statement as of April 30. What should be the journal entries if the company used the revenue or income method? O, dito, ang sinasabi lang nito, imbes na every month nagkakaroon ng adjusting entry at the end of the year na lang ito yun nga lang nag-request yung management ng interim report as of April 30 ngayon dahil kailangan mo ng report dahil hinihingi ito ng management kailangan natin magkaroon ng mga adjusting entries kahit na sa dulo pa ng taon ito magkakaroon talaga dapat ng uh, reporting so tinotal natin ito Same, same amounts ito, ano? O, on January 1, imbis na yung credit mo ay liability account, under revenue account, or yung income method, deb, uh, debit to cash, credit sa subscription fees. That is a revenue account for 215,000. Ang second entry ko is yung collection mo naman nung March. O, the same amount, 147,000 ang credit mo, revenue account. Pansinin mo, wala yung mga monthly adjusting entries natin kasi ang sa modified natin na illustration at the end of the month ito. Pero, for purposes of interim report, naalala ninyo yung interim report, ang sinasabi natin dyan na um, reporting of a period na less than one year. So, dito, January, February, March, April, four months nang hingi ng report si management. So, gawa tayo ng reports, adjust muna tayo ng mga accounts para may reflect kung natam, para may reflect natin yung mga tamang nangyayari sa company. O dito, tinotal ko lang yung mga na-end na. Ang matitira is yung hindi mo pa kinikita, which is nandoon sa liability account mo. Kaya dito, under the income method, nag-debit ka ng subscription fees na 200,000 nag-credit ka ng unearned subscription fees na 200,000. Kasi ito yung portion na hindi mo pa kinikita. I-set up muna natin sa liability account. Yun yung difference ngayon compared sa ating 
liability method. O, pag ginawa natin yung T account, subscription fees mo kasi, pinasok natin buo yung amount, pero kailangan natin i-adjust para sa portion na unearned o, dito natin ilalagay. Debit doon sa subscription fees, yung revenue account, then credit doon sa unearned subscription fees, which is your liability account. O, so, for comparison, yung dalawang methods, yung nasa taas, eto yung ating liability method yung nasa babang portion naman, eto yung ating revenue method yung subscription fees mo, magiging the same pa rin yung ending balance at ganun din sa unearned subscription fees mo same amount pa rin, regardless sa method na ginagamit natin so I hope by now uh, fi-figure out na ninyo kung papaano ito nagiging ano, nagkakaiba. Kung paano yung mga methods na ito, nagkakaiba. Sa mga entries and sa mga amounts. Pero, pagdating sa dulo, after adjusting entries, dapat parehas na. So, that would be all for our session for today. I hope you were, you are now able to distinguish yung dalawang klase ng methods. The balance sheet approach and the income statement approach. Pag prepayments, asset method versus expense method, O kapag unearned revenues naman, you have the liability method versus your income or revenue method. So maraming salamat for, uh, for tuning in, for listening, and for watching to my session. I'll see you around on the upcoming sessions.